Historically, that's the way it was. And I suppose Darwin wasn't the only executioner of that way of looking at it, but he was perhaps the most important one. To me, that had the effect of what I call raising my consciousness as to the power of science to explain how big, complicated things, things that seem to require a special explanation, can actually happen by simple means from simple beginnings. And that makes me feel it doesn't disprove the existence of God, but it makes God seem increasingly superfluous. And having shown how superfluous any kind of design explanation is, for just the reasons you've said, it makes me feel, what's the point of believing in God at all? And, and uh, I, well, all right, I mean, I'll stop there and, and see what you say about that. Well, I'm going to jump off the deep end and say, I will accept in the way in which you presented it, the God in whom I believe is superfluous. That is, I do not need God. That the God in whom I believe is a God who gave himself superfluously, whether I needed him or not, that in my religious tradition, in my firm, deep down within me belief, God gave himself to me and he gave himself. It's his love for me. We can only experience here on the surface of the earth the love between human beings, and sometimes that becomes extremely precious and very, very, uh, and very, very important, the love between two human beings or many human beings. God's love transcends that many times over. This is religious faith, Richard, and I can't pretend that uh, I can prove it to anyone, because if I did, it would not be religious faith. There's an element in me and in human culture in general, okay, that says, if I believe in God, because God gave himself to me, then the way I think is very different than the way someone who doesn't believe in God thinks. I admit it's an if, but I will not accept that I'm being duped. I will accept that it's superfluous in the sense that contrary to what many Catholics do, they look to God as a source of explanation. In fact, I have many Catholic friends, I, I preach to them, I talk to them, who pray that we scientists will not find certain explanations so that they can fill them with God. They really have that mentality. Well, to me, that's absurd. I mean, God gave us brains and means of thinking in order that we could explore the universe and find answers to the questions we have. God is not a God of explanation, primarily. He's a God of love. And consequently, I, I would accept that God is superfluous if I'm looking for a God to explain things. I don't need God. In fact, if God is a God of need, it's not God, because he transcends our needs. He gave himself um, superfluously, gratuitously. I didn't reason my way to God. I didn't, you know, work my way to God. I didn't earn this faith that I have. And this faith is nothing other than God himself. Now, I'm getting very preachy, I must admit. But You're being totally fascinating, I assure you. Uh, it's, it's a whole other dimension of human life. It certainly is for me. And I'm afraid it's not shared by a lot of religious believers. They really are subject to the very criticism you're making. That science has come to explain so much that why can't we simply accept that if we work hard enough, science is going to explain everything, and therefore God is superfluous. Well, I don't know about the science end of that. I have a slight suspicion that we'll never explain everything, because if we didn't, then I'm out of a job, and so are you. <laughs> <laughs> so we, you know, but I do, I do uh, criticize those who um, will, um, from, from two ends, I'd criticize you in the um, sort of idea that God is superfluous because, you know, we seem to be getting to a point where we can explain it all. Things that we needed God to explain time ago, you know, we've now found an explanation for, okay? Your famous book on the rainbow, you know, 
what, what did you call it? The unweaving, uh, the, unweaving rainbow. the rainbow. It's magnificent. And it does away with God to explain the rainbow. We don't need God to explain the rainbow. All we need is, uh, you know, know what a spectrum is. <laughs> But the point is, in the end, I also, as a scientist, I'm foisting a little bit upon you, but as a scientist, I do believe, even in scientific research, we're participating in mystery. That we'll never have the final answer. That it's always yes. drawing us on like I a witch. I that may be right. I'm, I, in I, a way, I'm equally excited by the thought that we, we'll never have the final answer and the possibility that we will. I mean, I think both, both, uh, both yeah. thoughts are equally enthralling. Yeah, to, to keep going on, we have to think that we will yes. have the final answer, yes. right? Yes. But on the other hand, you're correct. There's this tension. We will because, you know, we're working so hard. I take it, it's, it would seem to follow from what you've just been saying, that you don't um, need God for explanation, that, that you, sh you, you, you don't believe in miracles. Mm. Do you have any easy questions? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it wouldn't, uh. wouldn't something like uh, the, the virgin birth be pretty counter to the uh, to the spirit of what you've just been saying that so eloquently was, again my general background to trying to give an answer would be the following and I'll stutter over miracles I really will I have to admit it it's, I'm not embarrassed by them but I will stutter about them it was God's free way again of dealing with us he freely okay uh, in his own, uh, his own way of thinking, decided to save us because we, we were sinners, original sin and all this, and he decided to save us in this way and sent his only begotten son born of a virgin. I don't see that that is inconsistent with my scientific approach to things, that God, while I'll use the word, can intervene in his creation. I would not want God, God please, to do this too often. <laughs> but I can believe that he can do it in his own, you know, and he hasn't done it too often. Most of the miracles that, you know, I've read about or heard about, I don't believe in. Because I believe they're superfluous, and to, to come back to the whole other word. A lot of the medical miracles and all of this, I simply don't believe that God is always doing this. Which one? Just name one that you really do believe in, then. The virgin birth, the resurrection. Okay. Um, Don't push me. That, that, I mean, that does seem really seriously <coughs> inconsistent with the wonderful things you were saying earlier. It seems to be so... It does. Uh, ...petty, in a, in a way. It does. But from my religious faith, it's based upon, and I must say, you know, it, it, it puts me in an embarrassing position as a scientist, but nonetheless, I can say that I'm consistent with myself by accepting that God is a God of love who loves in this way. And he's done this because he loved us, wanted to save us. I think we'd both agree that one of the great virtues of science is it's universal. I mean, Japanese science is not different from American science, etc. Right. But yet, when, you, when, you, when I asked you about the virgin birth, and you said it's part of the tradition in which you were brought up, uh, and you'd earlier agreed that had you been born a Muslim, you would have had a different tradition. So had you been born a Muslim, you would believe in, I don't know, Mohammed's winged horse or, or whatever, which I take it you don't believe in. Um, how can you reconcile that with being a scientist? The only thing I can say to that is what I said before, is that over 